because I plan to see Wednesday, they say I have to, to check it again. I check it like a few times with a regular test, but now I did a deep test, you know, to be sure that uh, that uh, we can that we can deal with it um, uh, Wednesday. I want you, I want you again. To, I promise that uh, it's going to be a test. The people are going to come, and anyone who would love to come to the test means when you pass the test Wednesday. When you pass the test Wednesday, if it's woman, just to go to Mikveh. If it's men, have to do Brit Mila. If you had it, maybe to do the pin, maybe you did before and you have some certificate. Like I know there is some people uh, with us that did it, they have certificate. So then, or they, we know, I know the Mohan, that they just to go to the to the mikveh. So then, if you're gonna pass the test, uh, you're gonna accept the Judaism. There is like few words that you're gonna say, uh, I wanna be Jewish, I accepted 613 mitzvot, and I'm ready for all the mitzvot Torah and Chachamim until the last generation. And then you just wait for the mikveh. If you find a mikveh right away, we do it. If it's going to take time, a little time, it's going to take a little time. If anybody would love to come Wednesday, please, after the class, text me. You should not call, but text me. You text me, I call you back. I know there is some people have kids and have some issues. So then maybe Mr. Hashem today, I'm going to go one by one, talk to you on the phone. And again, Tuesday, I'm going to prepare you with the questions. I'm going to tell you what kind of questions it's going to be. And I'm going to point some questions. This you have to answer. These questions you have to answer. So then to be, you have to be prepared. Now, let me try one halakha. You know, if, if, if you didn't uh, answer it, it's still fine. But let's how you are with uh, this halakha. Hold on. Do you know how I have to cut my nails? Anybody can answer this? Which one is the first? So this is the right hand. The right hand, we start with the second one. It's going to be the first. To be careful. That is not going to be on a floor. When people walk on it, it's going to be a kind of danger. Spirituality. Like in the morning, we wash our hands. When we cut our nails, after that, we have to wash our hands. So then, what we have to do, so, what we have to do, we have to cut it in a certain way. Not one after one, not, not one, two, three, four, five. No. Second, second, four, one, two, three. Question? It's clear. Clear? Clear. Second, four, second, four, one, two, three. This is the right hand. Let me see if I can just, just, uh, no, I cannot, don't have it to, to show you. Okay, second, four, one, two, three, this is the right. How about the left? Uh, Anybody know how about the left? First, the Indy, we call it the Indy. Four, second. Five, three, one. Again, four, second, five, three, one. This is the left, this is the right. Second, four, one, three, five, four, second, five, three, one. Let's go from. Rabbi, excuse me? Yeah? 
is there a who is reason this? that it has to be in this particular order? Yes, who is this? Who is this, this is Diane. It's Diane, I'm trying to understand the reason for the particular order of cutting the nails. I understand uh, that they're clean, you know, when you cut them, but I'm not sure about the reason for the order you cut them. Okay, uh, because I explained before many classes, many times in the classes before, um, and you go for a month, you come back, you see some spiders, you see some, uh, you know, the house is not so clean. Even it was empty and nothing there, and nobody gonna uh, um, come and do anything. So then, when place is empty, try to imagine there is one window open. You may find cats or other animals. Why? Because it was one small window open maybe mouth, maybe more things. And uh, when some place is empty, there is, um, things may come. Even homeless can come in the house and you know, people come back and they find out somebody live in the house. Okay. So this is, this is a, this is a, uh, 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 when something is empty. When we sleep, for example, when we sleep, our body is empty. The neshama leaves the body. And then the unpureness come to our body. The death person, what happened? The neshama leaves the body. So then we can see that, that any, anything, any, any animal person who died, the animals come and you know, warm and, 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 and whatever coming and eat the body. So then when the neshama leave, even there is not animals coming, but still there is some um, um, bad energies just coming to the body because the body is empty, the neshama is not there. We wake up in the morning, the neshama come back, so then this Unpureness just go out of the body, but it's come to the end of our fingers. What we do in the tilatia dine, just to remove it 100%. But we still have the nails that it stay there. Now, when we cut the nails like regular, one after one, one of them go on the floor, there is still unpureness on it. The same thing that we wash our hand, not to touch any food or not to touch by food because food, it, you bring it to your body. So the same thing, don't touch your nose, your ears, everywhere that there is a door to go into your body. There is a, uh, uh, we, we call it uh, uh, um, unpureness forces, unpureness power just can come into our body. This is why we wash our hand. But it's even we wash our hand, it still stay on the nails. It still stay on the nails. So then we have to be careful not to walk on nails. Now, when we cut in one after one, we still have the power. When we jump, so there is no more power, like uh, unpureness on the nails. This is why we do this way. The same thing, the the right one, the left one. Actually, it's gonna be. You don't start from the side. You start in the middle, and you jump. So second, fourth, you know, right to left. And the same thing here. Four second, it's right to left. Four second, five, three, one. This is the idea. If you didn't do it exactly, but you just jump, it's still okay. But we try not to 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 start in the in the sides, not the sides in the middle, then we go middle, then sides, middle, then sides. So then the unpureness, you know, this is things that uh, um, it's very difficult to explain to the person that you feel holy, how you can feel holy. Holy, it's feeling. Holy, it's not something that you can touch. <coughs> Some people said, listen, I came to uh, this place or Shabbat, I feel 
fill Shabbat. What do you fill Shabbat? What do you mean you fill Shabbat? It's going to be Tuesday. You also fill Shabbat. What it means is anybody can fill Shabbat. Me as a person, not always I fill it, but sometimes then I come to the shul and in the middle of Shimon Ice, right? Then I feel Shabbat. For sure, when everybody dresses nice, right? but not always. Sometimes people dress nice and they, you know, there is good environment, but still I don't feel Kadosh, I don't feel holy. Sometimes I do feel holy. So this is something that we cannot explain 100%. Because to feel holy, or to feel pure or unpure, people go to me. They came out from me and said, Wow, I feel different. Even, you know, in halacha, when I do an etilat yadayim, when I wash my hand in the morning, but, you know, I say to people, sometimes they feel uncomfortable, like nauseous, like tired. You know what I say to people? Wash your hand. Some people, right away, Wow, now I feel better. Because you take the unpureness. Sometimes you don't understand what is unpureness, but then you can feel in general, I feel much better. In general, I feel connected. In general, I feel that I'm back to myself. Make sense for you guys? Can I make a question? Absolutely, this is a very good explanation. Thank you. Yes. Can I make a question? Okay, so, so, so this is the idea about the nails. This is the idea about the Tilatia time. This is the idea about the mikveh. This is the idea when you come to shul. You know, people say to me sometimes, I go to this shul, I don't feel anything. They don't feel anything. They go to other shul, or oh, here I feel connected. It can be because of the rabbi, because of people, because uh, you have friends over there, because it's more serious. It can be different things. But sometimes just because here is more kadosh, here it's more people don't talk lashon hara, and, and and people more calm, and people or even they are not calm, but they have a good manners. Like you know, sometimes you meet a person and say, "Wow, this person I just feel comfortable," and with some people you feel uncomfortable. Sometimes you like people. We, do we know why we like this person? And sometimes we don't like the people and other people say, no, he's a good person, she's a good person, and we don't. What happened? We have to know, even, even our neshama, it's come from different places. So when the neshama comes from the same place, when I see the person, the neshama of this person, the same place of my neshama, I feel connected right away. So that there is things that not always we can explain, we don't know why, but we do know why. You know, even parents and children, before you come to the world, you saw yourself how you look like. You saw your father, your mother, and you decide to be a child for this man and woman before you came here. So then there is friends, there is Neshama that met before, and from the same root, same part of the tree of the Neshama, and you feel connected, and comfortable, and close to this person. You know why? Because you are from the same branch, from the same place. Let's say, to make it easy for you, some Neshama from the right eye, some of the shamot from the left eye, some of the shamot from the right ear, some of the shamot from the left ear, some of the shamot from the nose, some of the shamot from the mouth. So then, when you per when you meet a person, both of you from the right ear or from the ears general, you feel closer. If you have the shamot from from your eye, from from eye, and 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 you are from eye also, so then you feel connected from the right one, from the left one. General from I, from any part in our body. And each generation also is part of the body of the Neshama. So then what I try to say, there is um, uh, powers that we not necessarily see. 
sometimes we don't feel people who is uh, really connected their spirituality they have a spiritual in their life and this is the most important the feel things you see a person you feel wow this person i can learn this person i can be friend you see one person no this person not for me away moshe rabbeinu is a chamim tiyas moshe rabbeinu have a great neshama why moshe rabbeinu is moshe rabbeinu why not a king david why not Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov? Why Moshe Rabbeinu? Chamin, explain to us. Because Moshe Rabbeinu had the greatest neshama, that all the neshama included on his neshama. Means two people cannot talk. He can be connected to both of them. His neshama is covered many things. And this part, that we learn now, again, can I prove it? To some people is a proof. To some people is not a proof at all. Rabbi, show me. And some people ask me that. Show me. How do you know? You know, now it's remind me, I used to live in Switzerland, and I have a friend that I learned together in Yeshiva. And uh, he was Hasidic. His name is Yossi. I days in Florida. We learned in Israel. And then he came to visit me. I used to live in Switzerland. He came to visit me at home. And, you know, hi, how are you? He's not as Hasidic as before. But like regular, okay. And uh, you know, came for Shabbat, he did Shabbat with me, very nice, I did Kiddush, food, everything fine. But after Shabbat, he came to me. I mean, he was at my home, he was talking, and he told me, listen, I would love to share with you something. Say, okay, Yossi, what do you have, what do you want to say? Tell me, you know, let me tell you, I don't want to hurt you, but uh, I'm not religious anymore. I don't keep Shabbat. I don't keep anything. I don't feel. And even in Yom Kippur, I was in London, and I especially did shopping. So, wow, what happened? I was shocked. Actually, I was shocked. And then he told me, can you help me? So what can I help you? Tell me. See some child, I dip myself in mikveh. When I get out from the mikveh, I feel like a new person. I broke everything in the Torah. I don't keep anything. I tried to go to mikveh. Now that I got to mikveh, I came out, I feel different. Can you help me to release it? Is what he asked me. I was a young guy, 20-something. Talking to you like 30 years ago. I was 20-something and he told me this, you know, what happened. Then, uh, it really hurts me. And he was talking the whole night until 5 o'clock in the morning. And, I, and then, you know, 7, 7.30, go to Shul, to, to Davin. Shacharit, five o'clock, he told me, you know, I talked to so many people. Nobody showed me there is Hashem. It was just imagination. I don't know that, that we talk so many hours. Maybe I start again to believe in Hashem. It means that some people need a proof, logic proof. What I tried to explain to him, what I remember 30 years ago, that is not everything logic. We have to, to let our body to be free, to get energies, and to fill Hashem, Kedusha, Unpure. Yes, I 
do this, I go there, I feel bad, I feel not okay. I use some words, I feel not okay. I use different words, I do berachat, tefillah, I feel better, I feel connected, I feel the kedusha. This is what we was talking about. And this is what I try to translate to you. There is, you know, today we learn it shul after shacharit. You know, very interesting about conversion. And what it's better to convert in Israel or in Los Angeles. Which conversion is stronger? I'm sure all of you are going to answer me. In Israel, for sure, that's it. The Gemara say no. The Gemara tell us, when you do it in Israel, because in Israel, you get a passport, you get ETD in Israel, uh, you, you are, you know, you have all the benefits. In Israel today, it's strong. So then you become Jewish, which that means that you are real Jewish. When you do it in Los Angeles, so then nothing, you know, you heard about Israel, but here in California, you have everything. You are really in a, in a paradise. This is the best. Nobody pay EDD like in California or United States. And, and um, I don't think in Israel they have so much uh, food and conditions and, and healthcare and stuff like here. Here it's one of the top places. Or Hashem today Israel also. But, but here it's one of the top places in the world. People try to immigrate here from everywhere. So when you convert here means it's real. You want to be Jewish. For example, a person would like to be Jewish because his fiance or her fiance. If you find a man or you find a woman that are Jewish, they want to convert because they would like to get married to have a family. So then we have a problem with this. After we did the whole process, we have to watch to see the keep Shabbat, to see the keep kosher. We are not sure. Even by the Rambam, by the Halacha, it was a rabbi in Israel to get mad at him. But when he gave a certification, he made a difference. He said, This is conversion A, this is conversion B. What is the difference? Conversion B means, means that it's not only for Hashem. People coming for Hashem. There is, I try to check out why they want to be Jewish. They don't want to get married. There are a couple, both of them, they want to convert. Or people that are not about to marry now, just because they believe in Hashem. And some people, they want to be Jewish because they have a boyfriend, she's Jewish, girlfriend, she's Jewish. They want to be Jewish. So for those people, it's conversion number two. The Rambam, the Alakha tell us we have to wait a little bit. Sometimes until they have kids and to see how the kids behave. What they try to do to wait, to let them, I don't know, suffer, but kind of suffering. More difficult. Go, come back, do this, do that. Tomorrow you make an appointment, you, you cannot, uh, I cannot show up why to check how much it's serious and how much they want to sacrifice for it to be Jewish sometimes they say it's a game it's not a game just to check if they're serious if there is a man a woman they have nothing behind just to be Jewish is clear so sometimes we wait a little bit this one, sometimes I try to check the person. She's ready. He's ready. They are real. Not because they have kids. They have kids. They wanted the kids going to be Jewish. Because they are real. So, the test is not just a test. 
test questions and answers. It's going to be on a very good Tuesday. And then Wednesday, it's going to be test. But it's not a point. The point is to feel that your spirituality ready. You understand? Like the Gemara, the Talmud tell us, when you eat not kosher, when somebody talk Torah to you, your ears become like, what are you talking about? It's not for me. When you start eat kosher, and you are kosher for some times, and you have Shabbat for some times, it's even difficult for you to turn on light in Shabbat. I cannot touch it. It's mukze. Automatically, your body rejects it. But it's not kosher. You don't want to eat it. Okay? Sorry. So you feel you don't want to eat it. You don't want to have it. You want to be kosher. And this is the important. That it's going to be more spiritual for you to be sure that you are keeping the Torah and mitzvot. Lady, you got to convert. After you're going to get married, you're going to cover your hair. It's hard. It's difficult. You know, we have Torah and we have Judaism. The Gemara tells us Judaism, for example, and the lady cover her hair. The Talmud, they say, the Talmud tell us what is Judaism. For example, one of the examples is the lady cover. But to show that 
you ready. We don't have to dig to find that you're ready. Just to see clear. He's ready. She's ready. That's it. So, uh, so it was important. Thank you to Diana that she brought me this week uh, the question about uh, the, uh, how to cut nails. She didn't care about this because what we do with the nails, we don't just put it on the floor. We are afraid that people are going to walk on it. So I, I say to people, just put it in the garbage or in a bathroom because they're like in a garbage. I think that you're going to bury it. Burn it, they burn the garbage, right? Or you put it in the water, so then it's gonna be like you bury it. And this is what we have to do. But when you cut it in a different, even it's uh, fell on the floor, it's not so bad. Again, these spiritual things that we not always understand, or maybe we don't understand at all, but some people you can talk with about it, because they have this uh, uh, sensitivity uh, to feel energies, to feel Kedusha. Again, for me, to feel Kedusha, sometimes it can be the night when I'm learning, or Shabbat, or even some regular day. Um, so, this is the this is the what we learned today, and it's really really important to see how you can connect it, how you can just. I love those people, so then I love myself. I love those people. They live from Shabbat to Shabbat because I feel the whole week. What do you mean? Just the word, It's Shabbat already. So what, what do you do in Shabbat? What do you mean? I learned the Chumash. I listen to the Torah. We sit all together. We have Kiddush. What is Kiddush? To divide it, the weekdays to Shabbat. And Avdala, we learned that, right? Avdala, the same thing. I divided Shabbat to the weekdays. The Rambam tell us it's going to be both of them from the Torah. The other Shita, the other rabbis, the other poskim. So the Friday, yes, after Shabbat, no. But the halakha, the final halakha. Each one of us have to do Abdallah after Shabbat. You cannot eat before Abdallah. If you didn't do it yesterday night, you cannot read, you cannot eat. Just after the class, go and do Abdallah. Until what day? Until Tuesday. If you didn't do Abdallah after Shabbat, you have 